Have you ever wondered how Celtic and Rangers would do in the English League? Well, today, we're going to find out. Let's take a look. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're taking Rangers and Celtic, the old firm, Scotland's biggest two teams, and moving them south of the border. And we're doing that to find out the age-old question of how they would get along in the English league system. Now, if that sounds like something that you are interested in, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any future content here on the channel. Videos like this, let's play videos like my current Blackburn Rovers save, Elevating Ewood, and much, much more. Plenty of content coming on the channel and you'll not miss a single bit of it if you hit that subscribe button. If you enjoyed today's video, give it a big thumbs up and let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. So today we are taking on the age old question. How do Scotland's biggest two teams fare when they're put in the English league system now? This is a question that's raged on for years. It took a lot of momentum in the early 2000s, around about the 2002 mark, uh, when Celtic were in the UEFA Cup final. There were moves afoot to try and move the two teams south of the border, but nobody really wanted it apart from them. Uh, there was no real benefit to the English system. There was definitely no benefit to the Scottish system. So things stayed at the status quo. Now, that momentum for change has definitely died down over recent years through uh, Rangers' administration and demotion down the Scottish leagues to today where neither side are quite at the level they were sort of 20 years ago, neither really pushing for Europa League or UEFA Cup, whatever it was called back then, uh, final places now. But they've both been to a UEFA Cup final in the not too distant past. But today they're probably not quite the super teams they were. They probably aren't going to challenge the uh, Premier League elite. But that is what we're going to find out today in this video. Now, I found a database on the Steam Workshop that moves Celtic and Rangers into the Skybet Championship. It also bizarrely moves Derby County and Reading into the Scottish Premiership. But minor semantics. If I was doing it myself, I would have just bumped teams up uh, the Scottish League system. But, you know, we'll, we'll cover what happens in Scotland as a second point later on in the video. Uh, so if you're interested in how Derby and Reading get on in Scotland, stay tuned. Uh, but the bulk of this video is going to be looking at how Celtic and Rangers fare over a 10-year 10, 10 period uh, and see if they can get themselves into the Premier League from the Championship and stay there and maybe even challenge for European places. Uh, so let's just go to game. So what's happened is uh, I've simulated the game forward at 10 years and I'm going to look for the first time with you at the same time and find out what's been happening. So uh, first things first, I think we'll go alphabetically. We'll look at Celtic. And promisingly, they are in the Premier League. Now, we are at a uh, new start to a season, so they are sixth on alphabetical order. Um, their media prediction is 17th, so, so that suggests that maybe they are not going to be challenging for European places. They've got Freddie Jungberg as manager. I'm not sure how long he's been there for yet, but let's have a look at the competition history. And you can see they have not been in the Champions League since the first season of the game, uh, where they lost to PSV in the qualifying rounds. But we'll go domestically first. And that's quite bad, that is. So uh, they got promoted second, I'm assuming, behind Rangers uh, in the first season. Uh, and immediately relegated with just 30 points in their second campaign, the first in the Premier League. And they've essentially yo-yoed between Championship and Premier League with their highest Premier League finish coming in the 28-29 season of 14th. Uh, they have won the Championship the season before with a massive 95 points, but things aren't looking great for the Celtic side, who back here you'll see dominated Scottish football for a decade. Uh, they are in the Premier League again though now. They've obviously come up via the playoffs this time after finishing 5th in the Championship, but that does not really suggest they have become a powerhouse in English football. Uh, if we have a look, I'm guessing there's nothing in Europe. So they lost in the Champions League qualifying rounds, finished third in their Europa League group, so fell into the Conference League, where they lost in the first knockout round. So their one season of Europe was quite disappointing. Uh, let's have a look at cup-wise. Uh, they've never got past the fifth... Oh, no, they got this as a semi-final as a championship 
is that the championship? Yeah, as a championship side, last season, uh, only to lose to Newcastle. Uh, so that's quite disappointing. That, but that is a good run for a championship side. In the EFL Cup, the Carabao Cup, uh, quarterfinals at best. Back here, uh, again, losing to Newcastle. A familiar theme. And the EFL Trophy, obviously, they fell into the championship a couple of times. So have played in the uh, Papa John's Trophy. And they haven't won that either. So, really, it's quite disappointing um, on the whole for Celtic. They've not won anything. They've not come close to winning anything. They, there's their UEFA Cup uh, runners-up in 2003. Uh, but, yeah, they've not really done much. I mean, let's have a look at their history of managers as well. Let's see what's been happening. So, the game started down here. Uh, they've worked their way through managers quite quite rapidly. No one's really stayed, apart from Freddie Youngberg, who took control of them in 2027. Uh, he got them champions of the championship, relegated, and then promoted back again. Um, so he's been there for four, uh, just over four years now, and that is the longest anyone has stayed in the job. Henrik Larsson had a brief spell um, back Got them rele relegated and came back up via the playoffs, but didn't last much longer in his first season back in the Premier League. So, all in all, quite disappointing for Celtic. But let's see how Rangers have fared. And as we can see, Rangers also in the Premier League, but a much healthier media prediction of seventh. And they are in the Europa Conference League this season as well. So that is promising. Uh, they've got uh, Roberto Di Zabi as a manager. And we'll have a look at their managerial history as well. Managerial history as well. And also we'll go and have a look at their current squads in a second. Uh, so let's have a look at their competition history. Uh, I'm guessing we're not going to see anything on the winner's roster from here. No. So domestic leagues, this is more promising. Okay, so they won the championship in their first season and then established themselves as a mid-table Premier League side. Uh, runs of everywhere between, what, ninth, is that ninth and 15th across eight seasons? Ninth, yeah, eight seasons. And then last season was their breakout year. They came seventh and have obviously secured themselves a Europa Conference League uh, berth for the upcoming season. Uh, now, obviously, you can see down in their history here, they dropped from the Premiership down to League Two in Scotland and worked their way quickly back up. Um, since then, they've become more of a force in Scottish football and are obviously... Currently in this game, a much better side than Rain uh, than Celtic, having finished seventh last season. Let's have a look at their cup performances. Uh, if we have a look down here, the Champions League, the first season they got to the group stages uh, and uh, finished third, which meant they dropped down and lost to Young Boys in the first knockout round of the Europa League. Uh, that doesn't mean they drop into the Conference League, but they do have a Conference League uh, berth this season. Uh, FA Cup, have they got any further than... No, they've not made a final, so they're not get as close to the final as Celtic. They've got a couple of quarter-finals, lost to Newcastle on extra time. Newcastle have obviously done well in cup competitions. We'll have a look at uh, domestic honours in a second. Uh, but yeah, generally, they have been knocked out by the quarter-final stage. How about the Carabao Cup? Again, quarter-finals is the best they can muster. Uh, Newcastle, once again, appearing on this list. Uh, EFL Trophy, I'm guessing this is their 23 side, I would hazard a guess. But again, nothing really happening there. Um, so, let's have a look at their managerial history. And as we can see, uh, Gary McAllister had a spell as caretaker manager. They've sacked a the manager here, Abelardo, after four and a half years. Uh, Rafa Benitez came in for a season and a half as well. Didn't really do much. They've had a decent, not not as frequent a turnover of managers as Celtic. Uh, but their current incumbent has been there for just over a year. A year and a half uh, for Roberto De Zerbi. And he's done quite well in that first season. Uh, that first full season at least. Getting into seventh place. Uh, Rafa didn't last very long now, did he? Uh, right, let's have a look at the Premier League itself. And have a look at the past winners. And they are all Manchester City, apart from one season here, where Chelsea took the title in the 22-23 uh, season. Man City have then dominated. Wow, that is an impressive run of results. Uh, let's have a look at the FA Cup and see who's been taking that one. I'm suspecting we're going to see Newcastle appear on the recent winners list. Potentially, it's going to be all Man City as well. No, Newcastle appear there on the 23-24, beating Burnley in the final. They've been runners-up, though, for the last three seasons. 
Um, Man City have obviously had a good few doubles uh, domestically as well, but their FA Cup has been spread around a lot more uh, with Everton getting a title, Liverpool, Arsenal, Chelsea, Man United, uh, Newcastle, as well as Manchester City. Right, should we have a look at the Carabao Cup as well, just for completeness? Here we go. Arsenal are the current holders and Newcastle won that. Man City haven't taken a Carabao Cup, actually. No, they have taken the one in the 25, 26, and again in the 27, 28 season. I clearly can't see. Uh, Man United have taken a couple. Chelsea with a couple. Everton, another cup as well. And Arsenal, along with that single title for Newcastle. Shall we have a look at what's been happening in Scotland? And incredibly, the holders of the Scottish title are Derby County, who, along with Reading have been pretty dominant by the looks of things. And I suppose that's that's quite indicative of the level of the rest of the uh, Scottish Premiership, where two pretty mediocre average championship sides in England have come up and started to dominate. So uh, Reading won three of the first four titles, but since then, Derby have taken six of the last eight, with St Johnston being the only Scottish side to feature in the top two of the Scottish Premiership over the last 10 seasons. That is pretty damning. I was expecting some other Scottish teams to capitalise on this opportunity. I didn't really think Derby and Reading were that formidable, but clearly they are. And Derby are now the force in Scottish football. Uh, if we have a look at the Scottish Cup as well, just to see what's been going on there. As you can see, Reading are the most recent winners and they've won three of the last three. St Mirren, Kilmarnock, Motherwell, they've taken some trophies, but Derby and Reading have taken three. No, four for Derby, three for Reading. Seven out of the ten potential Scottish Cups have gone to them. Ten out of ten of the Scottish Premier Leagues have gone to Derby and Reading as well. And this is quite damning for Scottish football. So if we have a look at Celtic's uh, transfer history over the years... Uh, I'm not expecting to see much. They've spent 75 million last season, but brought in 70. Uh, have they spent big money at all? No, they've recouped 133 that season. There, How, who, who, that was a big one. They've okay. They've sold someone for 41 million to Newcastle. Uh, 60 million, 170 million. This must have been a year they got promoted. That is a big outlaying of money. Uh, Connor Gallagher from Wolves, uh, Cozzo from Forest. Horver, Hilvat from Porto, all for 20 plus million pounds. Uh, quite a lot of money being spent. Uh, but generally speaking, I suppose that season there was a big one as well. That must have been a Premier League year as well. 26 27, uh, selling for 160 million, bringing in 110. Uh, pretty much they're keeping the money that going that's going out is coming back in again by all accounts. They're not overspending, they're not really underspending either. Uh, but generally speaking, they're pretty what you what, what you'd expect for a mid-table yo-yo uh, Premier League team. And if we have a look at Rangers as well, generally speaking, if we start from the beginning here, they 30 in, 30 out. A huge outlaying in that first full season in the Premier League, 174 million. And that's something that Celtic didn't do. And quite clearly that paid dividends because they have not dropped out of the Premier League since uh, they spent 60 million here on Max Ahrens from Norwich. Patrick Schick came over from Leverkusen as well. Uh, so really bulking out their squad, spending 100 million on two players. That is what has kept them in the Premier League, I think. Uh, so all the seasons they've still been spending, they've been using their money quite wisely. I think 114 million here, another 160 million there, uh, 59 million on Santi Mina. And Jamal Lewis for 29 million part exchange as well. Plenty of money being spent and it has slowly worked for them. They have established themselves as sort of that mid-table to pushing for the European places as we skip through more. 150 million, 117, 60 in the last season. And that's the season where they've essentially consolidated their squad and become uh, European football hosts of European football once again. If we have a look at that squad, in fact... If we sort by transfer value, we can see there that their most valuable player is Sandri. And I'm not familiar with him. He is, in fact, originally from Santos in Brazil. Spent several seasons there with them and then came over for 11 million. He is probably their star player. If we, if we consult the uh, 
team information page, we can see that Max Ahrens is their captain. Their key player is, in fact, a 21-year-old new gen called Leonardo Grimaldo, who is a left winger. He looks pretty handy. Uh, 21 from Mexico. 30 caps, 11 goals already. He's pretty handy, isn't he? He's quite good. Um, we look at their captain, Max Ahrens, as well. He's now 31. He's He's been transfer listed by request, though, so he might be on his way out of the door, uh, the right back. And if we do a similar exercise for Celtic, uh, they've also got a young Mexican left back this time, uh, Manuel Olmos. He's got a quite scary looking face. Uh, he's got nearly 30 caps for his country, a uh, pretty high asking price. Pretty, uh, pretty decent looking uh, left back, centre back for uh, Mexico there. And if we look who's old enough to actually be real, James Garner, I think he might be their star player. At 30 years of age, the midfielder, uh, and a value of 20 to 50 million. Uh, he's pretty decent for a 30-year-old. He's probably indicative of a side that is going to be yo-yoing between the Premier League and the Championship if he is your best player. Uh, but he's still a handy player nonetheless. No England caps for him. If we have a look at their main... Uh, information page their captain is Luis Maximiano their goalkeeper who originally started out life at Porto uh, being sold to Granada in fact so maybe starts the game in Granada in Spain uh, before coming across to Celtic for 20 million uh, five or six seasons ago and their vice captain Dan and Doye uh, the Swiss right winger, he is again pretty handy but getting on in the years as well. If we have a look, he has come over from Basel for 10 million a few seasons ago, back when they were in the Premier League. And yes, as I thought, James Garner was their star player. His career history has seen him go all over the place essentially. So obviously starts out at Man United on loan to Forest. And once he's back, he makes a couple of starts, goes to Brighton on a free, Bournemouth on a free, before Celtic sign him for 11 million four seasons ago. So there we have it. All in all, not much to report for the old firm. They've come across to England and pretty much not done much. Celtic have been a disappointment yo-yoing between the Premier League and the Championship. Uh, but Rangers themselves spent big in that first league, uh, first season in the Premier League after winning the Championship and stayed put for nine whole seasons. Now getting themselves into European contention, finishing seventh last time around. They're going to feature in the Conference League and maybe they'll start getting themselves into those uh, key European positions, get themselves back into the Champions League and start, I mean they're not going to, but start challenging Man City for the Premier League title. Uh, Scotland itself is a bit of a strange one with Derby County now being the force of Scottish football despite not being anywhere near Scotland and Reading even further away they must be torrid away trips uh, for the rest of the league anyway that is where we're going to end today's video it's been an interesting look at how the old firm have gonna are going to get on if they do drop down into England uh, they're clearly not going to get on as well as they would have done if this happened 20 years ago when the talk was quite quite frequent about them coming down into the English league system. But there you have it. This is what Football Manager 2022 thinks will happen when the old firm play in England. If you've enjoyed the video, remember, give it a big thumbs up, subscribe, and join me next time for my regular Let's Play content with Blackburn Rovers. And I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot, guys. Well, hey, you've made it to the end of the video. And hang on, what's... It's a subscribe button. Tap on this. Even if you've done it already, just, just try it. See what happens. And then hanging around. Have a look. Have a look at these. One of these. Check out some of this amazing content. You won't regret it. I'll see you next time.